overlooked move. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has, for some reason, stopped publicly providing a large amount of animal welfare information on its website. For example, lab inspection reports have been removed from the database, with the department saying they raised privacy concerns. It might sound like a minor bureaucratic shuffle, but animal welfare advocates say thousands of dogs and cats used in animal testing could needlessly die as a result of this. Kevin Chase is the vice president of the Beagle Freedom Project, an animal welfare group, and he joined us in the studio yesterday along with his beagle called George. Watch. Kevin Chase, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So if I've got this right, USDA has taken offline, among other things, inspection reports, animal welfare reports that were available to the public, and they're doing this in the name of, quote, transparency, kind of an Orwellian spin on it. Why did they do this, and what are the implications of it? Why they did it is anybody's guess. It's clearly not in the name of transparency. Um, all commercial animal facilities across the country, it's about 7,000 of them, 1,200 of which are laboratories, all went black on Friday. Organizations like ours, government watchdog groups, the press, relies on this USA, USDA database for our work. And our charity alone, we use this database every day to identify which laboratories are using dogs and cats so we can reach out to them saying when you're done with the research we will take a dog just like George Washington who came from a laboratory here in the area and we'll provide him a great home but we have to be able to know who has these dogs and without this database it's complete silence and so what happens I hate even to ask this question because it's so upsetting but what happens to the dogs if no one takes the dogs they're summarily killed that is the standard operating procedure in a lot of places and so if they don't get an invitation from a rescue charity like Beagle Freedom Project then sadly many of these dogs do die. So just to be clear, and I'm, I'm very pro you know, animals, yeah. some of the animal rights groups are lunatic and resort to violence. Mm -hmm. And so you're not one of those. I mean, you're not planning to go attack a testing facility or firebomb anything, Eagle correct? Freedom Project has existed for five years, and what we've worked with laboratories in 36 states and eight countries. Um, we've rescued well over 1,000 animals from laboratories, given them a second chance at life. And a part of our program, too, is we follow up with the researchers that actually gave us the dogs, showing them pictures of the dogs in the new homes, because our message is this. No matter where you fall on that animal testing debate, whether right. you think it's a tragic necessity or a moral atrocity, there's a common middle ground, and that's we should be able to find homes for the survivors. And without this USDA database, we don't even, if a lab open tomorrow, a university starts using dogs tomorrow in Virginia or Maryland or anywhere else in the country, we won't know. We won't be able to approach them. So clearly this was a result of lobbying by somebody, and, I, and the interested parties are probably pretty obvious. I wouldn't want to speculate beyond that. And this often happens in transitions between administrations. People have their pit issues, yeah. and they use the first couple of weeks to get them through. It does seem a little weird, though, as a first move this. Were you notified that this is going to happen? We had no idea that this was going to happen. We use it every day. And so we're really hopeful that this is a transition issue, like you're saying, and that the president, President Trump, ran on a campaign and got into office on a law and order campaign. And without this database, the people breaking the law and being sanctioned for animal cruelty and violations of the Animal Welfare Act are now hidden and unaccountable. And so we're really hoping the president will call somebody at the USDA yes. and put this back online. Well, and that's exactly why I wanted to have you on. Yeah. The government is so big and so many things happen and exactly. things fall through the cracks and you never know what's really going on. This is one specific case where we can say, you know, this is obviously not serving the public at all. So to the testing question, I think like a lot of people, mm -hmm. I'm on the tragic necessity side. It horrifies me that it happens. On the other hand, if it's between a child and a dog, I mean, reluctantly, you'd probably go with the child. Of course you would. On the other hand, I fear as a longtime Washington resident that funding drives some of this experimentation beyond the point that is necessary, that's redundant because they're getting money. NIH grants. Is that true? It is. There is a lot of waste within the NIH. This $12 billion a year budget that goes to fund a lot of these controversial animal experiments that are redundant. They've been done. Many of them have failed. Sometimes the researchers even know that this cannot replicate what they've already done, but they'll do the research on the dog or whatever animal anyways because they have the funding and why not? Before you hurt a dog, you should have to prove that there's a, a good reason to do that. 100%. And Beagle Freedom Project, while we don't like animal testing, and we go out of our way to actually provide grants to universities to pioneer new models and methodologies to replace dogs like George Washington in laboratories. We just gave a $50,000 grant to John Hopkins yesterday for their evidence-based uh, toxicology collaboration. We want there to be a day where we don't use these animals in labs, and we're willing to Me work too. with the research community, 
help fund the non-animal alternatives, and then also take those dogs that survive and give them a good home. Who could say no to this? I agree. God bless you. You're, you're really doing a, a, the Lord's work, so thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us on. Thanks, Kevin.